Good afternoon. I'm David Sheeler. I'm pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Dunedin, and I'm joined today by our minister of music, Lucas Wilburn Weiss. And thank you for joining us on this midweek meditation for Wednesday, March the 6th, 2024. We hope this time is a time for all of us to pause, uh, to reflect, uh, and to prepare as we make uh, our way uh, towards, uh, towards the cross and the empty tomb, towards crucifixion and resurrection in, this, in the next season of Easter. Today's psalm is Psalm 84. Let's listen for God's word for us today. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are those who live in your house ever singing your praise. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Beka, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a Hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold your shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. God bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. A gospel. 
gospel reading for this day comes from Mark's gospel, the 11th chapter, uh, verses 15 through 19. This takes place in, during Jesus' final week in Jerusalem. He and his disciples have, have entered in on what we normally observe as Palm Sunday, and they've done so with great fanfare, maybe even a little bit of a street protest as the people have lined the streets and his supporters especially shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But that should give us a clue immediately that not only is there great celebration, but there's also great conflict. For they have already pronounced him as a, a, a great and glorious ruler, a new, a new king, a new way, which sounds wonderful, except for those who thought they were king, who thought that they were in control. And so pretty quickly, there is conflict happening with Jesus and the powers and principalities of his day. And this is a story of that continuing conflict. Again, Mark chapter 11 Verses 15 to 19. Let's listen again for God's word. Then they, that is Jesus and his followers, came to Jerusalem. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, is it not written, my house should be called a house of prayer for all the nations? And you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him. For they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out. Of the city. Again, Jesus is in conflict. Already the powers and principalities are, are responding, reacting to the change that he comes bringing. We read, of course, the psalm earlier, a wonderful psalm of praise for people who were going to the temple in Jerusalem to, to praise and to worship God. For them in that time, the temple in Jerusalem was literally the house of God, where God lived and sat. And there Jesus was centuries later at that same temple. That, of course, that temple no longer exists. So it raises the question, where can we find God now? Maybe like that psalm, we find God in nature, in creation, where the birds of the field are and the sun shines and we know the beauty and the wonder of what God has made. In other ways, we know uh, the house of God as churches, sanctuaries that we worship in. And I will tell you, in my life, I've worshipped in all sorts of sanctuaries, from beautiful, uh, elaborate, gothic uh, cathedrals to things that were, well, quite frankly, nothing more than a, a, a small lean-to shed with covered in palm branches. See, we can be anywhere whenever we're in community with each other where we are able to worship God. But don't be fooled that sometimes we can come into conflict when we turn to God, when we seek Jesus' way. You see, sometimes it can feel sort of strange that why would Jesus, when he was so nice and lovely and wonderful, be killed, be executed by the power of the state? And yet we should always be aware that whenever we turn to God and seek God's ways or, or look for God in creation or in relationship with others, that there are powers and principalities that react to that, sometimes violently. And yet we should never stop searching for God, being in God's presence, being in community and connection to one another. Because we know from Jesus that even when that violence comes, even when the opposition occurs, God will see us through. God will see us through. Please pray with me. Almighty God, we look for you. We look for you in the beauty of creation. 
We look for you in the community and connections that we share with one another. We look to connect to you, to others, to all that you have made. For in each other and in the gift of creation, in moments where we seek your presence, we are fed and nourished and strengthened. And yet, holy God, we know that there is opposition. There are powers and principalities. There are some, perhaps like, like those in the temple square that day with Jesus, who were just looking to make a buck. The power of the market economy that seems to drive everything and dictate all our lives. Help us, O oh God, when the opposition comes to know and trust in you, to remain faithful to your way of love, of justice, and peace, to stay faithful to your way of, of the connection that we share with others, particularly those who we long have, who long have been forgotten, ignored, and oppressed. Help us again, like Jesus, to remain faithful along the way knowing that even through the darkest valley, what lies behind is your resurrection life. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I'll be 